Welcome to AEHelp.com's IELTS Test Preparation videos. You now have a chance to face off with Rima from Tunisia, who again gets a band 9 for her performance on the speaking interview without a face mask. First, you get to do the speaking interview with me. I'm your examiner and you're the candidate. Record your answers and afterwards compare them to Rima's. As well, we have partnered with Cambly, a world-class app that lets you connect with a native English speaking tutor 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Simply download the app and begin learning with a professional anywhere, anytime. Cambly has been generous enough to give us this discount code for 1, 3 and 12 month plans. This discount code is also in the video description and with 12 month plans you get 4 months of free English. And don't worry, for any unused minutes that you cancel in advance, Cambly will give you a refund on 3 and 12 month plans. Also, Cambly has challenged you for this lesson with another trivia question. The fifth person to correctly tell us what the store near Rima's house retails in an email response will get 60 minutes free speaking with a Cambly professional. Simply send us your answer to this email address again in the video description. Now watch and learn. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian and I will be your examiner for this part of the test and I will record this for marking purposes. The test has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. May I see your identification? Thank you. And what is your full name? Okay, Rima, here's your passport back. For part one, I will ask you some more questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. How did you come to this exam? And how will you go back home? Let's talk about time. What do you like to do in your free time? Who do you usually spend your free time with? What do you use to keep track of time? When is it important for you to be on time? Why is time valuable? Has the way you keep track of time changed from your childhood? If you could change one part of your time management, what would that be and why?
That is the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, here's a card with some questions on it. Don't turn that over yet. Here's some note paper and a pencil. You will have one minute to look at the questions on the card. Think about your answer. You can take notes in that one minute if you wish, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Okay, your one minute preparation time begins now. Go ahead and turn over the card. Rima, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Your two minutes is up, Rima. I'm going to stop you there and I will take back the card, the note paper and the pencil. And now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about handmade items. What are some things that people make by hand and not by machine? Is this always true? How are handmade objects better than those made by machines? How are machine-made objects better? Where can people purchase quality handmade merchandise? Can you elaborate? Let's talk about gifts. Is it better to buy a gift or to make a gift? If people spent more time on making gifts instead of buying them, how would this affect society? How has the tradition of making gifts changed compared to before?
That is the end of part three. That concludes the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. You will have your mark in about 10 days time with the other sections. Have a great rest of your day, Rima, and do remember to take your passport with you. Bye-bye. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test and I will record this for marking purposes. May I see your identification? Yes, this is the passport that I used for registration. Please take a look. Thank you. And what is your full name? My full name is Rima Hamemi, but you can call me Rima. Okay, Rima, here is your passport back. The speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. How did you come to this exam? I came here by car. My friend picked me up at my place and dropped me here uh, 30 minutes before the scheduled interview time. How will you go back home? The same way. My friend agreed uh, to take me home. Um, I just need to send her a text message. Let's talk about time. What do you like to do in your free time? In my uh, spare time, I like to sing, dance, and write some music. I've been into these since I was a little child. Who do you usually spend your free time with? I spend my free time by myself or with my friends. A couple days ago, I hang out with two of my friends for most of the day, catching up and doing shopping. What do you use to keep track of time? To know the time, I just use my phone. It's easy because it's always in my pocket and it's convenient. I probably look at it 10 times a day just to know what time it is. When is it important for you to be on time? I think it is very important to be punctual, especially for school and work. If I'm late for work, I could lose my job. And if I'm late for school, I may not be allowed to sit in. But thankfully, that hasn't happened yet. Why is time valuable? That is a very interesting question. I think that time is of great value because unlike money, no one knows how much they have. I mean, no one knows when their time on earth will run out. So every minute is precious. Has the way you keep track of time changed from your childhood? Yes, it definitely has. When I was a child, I would either look at a clock or a watch or ask someone for the time. But now, as I said, I just look at my phone. If you could change one part of your time management, what would that be and why? Given the chance to um, adjust organizing my time schedule, I think I would add more time to spend with my hobbies. I think I tend to overwork myself and life is rushing past me. That's the end of part one. For part two, here is a card with some questions, a note paper and a pencil. Don't turn the card over yet. You will have one minute to look at the questions on the card. Think about your answer. Take notes in the one minute if you wish, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Okay. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Go ahead, turn over the card. Rima, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Okay. About a year ago, I made a necklace for my best friend Fidia for her birthday. I knew that she was going away for school, so I decided to make her something to remember me by, because I know that we will not see each other as often once she's away. So we've been friends since primary school, and I know that she's into unique and beautiful jewelry. So I went to an arts and crafts store, and I bought semi-precious um, beads, crystal beads, and uh, copper wire. I designed the necklace by hand, and I got all the necessary tools. It took me a couple of hours to string the beads on the wire until it looked perfectly. Once the strings, uh, I mean, the beads on the wire, I crimped the ends with a plier so it would not fall off with use. When I gave Fidia the necklace, she was very happy, and I feel that not only did she appreciate the sentimental value of my gift, 
but she genuinely think it's a beautiful necklace. And she said that every time she will wear it, she would remember me by, even if she's far away. Okay, uh, please pass back the note paper, the pencil, and the card, thank you. And now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about handmade items. What are some things that people make by hand and not machines? That is a tough question because most commodities are made by machines these days. But I guess items like food, uh, paintings or jewelry are often made by hand, especially the ones that are valuable. Is this always true? No, not really, because machines make everything these days, even paintings. I bought a chocolate bar this morning and it's obviously made in a factory. How are handmade objects better than those made by machines? Um, handmade objects are better than those made by machines because they are original. Um, and um, for example, the necklace that I made for my friend, I'm sure that there isn't one like it anywhere. How are machine made objects better? Well, since technology advanced uh, so much during the last uh, years, mm, machines make um, smartphones, for example. So I think precision work is often better made uh, with robots. Where can people purchase quality handmade merchandise? Okay, yes. Um, people can buy a quality handmade, handmade merchandise in uh, specialty stores or art stores. They can find decorations or paintings that are original and traditional. Can you elaborate? Yes. Um, there is a gallery not far from where I live. The, they sell uh, original Tunisian handmade pottery and artwork. Let's talk about gifts. Is it better to buy a gift or to make a gift? I think it depends. If someone is going away, it's better to make the gift as it carries a sentimental value to it. But if it's a wedding gift, for example, it's more useful to buy a blender, for example. If people spent more time on making gifts instead of buying them, how would this affect society? It would definitely have an interest, interesting impact on society and the economy because Stores will make less money, people would save more money, and the gifts would carry more sentimental value to them. Because when you make the gift, you show that you care more. So it would have a positive impact on people's relationships. How has the tradition of making gifts changed compared to before? It has definitely changed. Uh, now we have tools and more advanced tools and machines that can make intricate and incredible gifts. Um, my friend made a, a toy car for his uh, brother's birthday using a 3D printing. Uh, this, uh, will, I mean, this wouldn't be possible a few years back. That's the end of part three. That concludes the speaking portion of the exam. You will have your mark in about 10 days time with the other sections. Uh, please remember to take your passport with you and have a great rest of your day, Rima. Thank you. Okay, thanks, bye-bye. So why does Rima get a band nine for her performance on this speaking interview? Well, for similar reasons as the previous. She's clearly very fluent. She understands all the questions. Importantly, she reflects the grammar of the questions that the examiner is asking. She does a great job of answering, explaining, and giving examples with good detail and no repetition. Also, she has good lexical resource. She paraphrases words from the question and she includes phrasal verbs and idiomatic language. Compare your recording from the start of the lesson to Rima's answers. A good idea is to write out your answers and compare them to the subtitles. Check to see if you have a matching level of grammar. Check to see if you have a matching level of fluency, coherence, and lexical resource. Notice, is your pronunciation approximately the same level 
as Rima's. This means, is it as easy to understand your answers as it is hers? If not, no worries. Keep studying and you'll get there too. Good luck the next time you sit your IELTS exam. For more video lessons like this one, as well as original practice exams and a fully interactive course, visit and join us at aehelp.com. Begin learning for success on your next IELTS exam. Also, remember to download and install Cambly's app to practice your speaking with a native English speaking tutor anywhere, anytime. Begin learning for success today. Subscribe to our channel, click over here, watch another video, click right up here, and click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.